We are the body of Christ, who stretches inward and reaches outward. A body who grows, serves, and transforms lives through the love of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Butchell Park Baptist Church. We are so glad that you have decided to join us today. We are a body of Christ who engages all generations through diverse ministries and impactful missions. Come grow, serve, and transform lives with us. We are growing through Bible studies, educational seminars, and prayer gatherings. Come grow with us. We've been serving our neighbors together for almost 100 years. Come serve with us. We worship together online and in person. Check us out at www.bpbaptist.org. All are welcome. Come and worship with us. All are loved. Come and find your place among us. We want to see all God's children to know the peace of Christ. Come transform lives with us. May the peace of Christ be with you. 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 Here at Butchell Park Baptist Church, there is always enough room at the table for you. for a call to worship, Psalm 100. Sing to the Lord a new song. Rejoice and give thanks, for the Lord takes pleasure in the people. Hallelujah. exciting news. Our garden ministry has reached a record harvest. Over 19,000 pounds of fruit and vegetables with more still to come. Thank you garden team for all of your hard work harvesting and delivering to our hungry neighbors in need. Remember that you can still purchase online worship yard signs. They're small and cute and will help our PDO in 
Butchell Park Baptist Church. York Signs advertising uh, our Sunday online worship service are available for $5 each. Proceeds from these signs benefits our Parents Day Out program. If you would like one of these signs, please contact the church office or pick up your yard sign on Sundays after worship gatherings. Uh, Mission Project for Shoe Boxes for Seniors uh, will pick up on Sunday, November 8th, and the return date is Sunday, December 13th. With students at home, our missions committee decided we would assemble Christmas shoe boxes for the elderly. Congress and nursing homes are insistent leaving, therefore have limited visitation. In addition, we have asked, uh, we've been asked by Creekside Assistant Living at 3535 Barstown Road if we could assemble Christmas boxes for, uh, for their 40, uh, 40 residents. Shoe boxes will be, will be available in the North X on Sundays beginning November 8th. A list of suggested items. Other items may be substituted. It might also be a great. Uh, it, might, uh, might, it might also be great to provide special items for our members, such as handwritten notes and perhaps baked goods. Church, thank you for spreading God's generosity. I'm grateful for my church. Uh, that gives us a, a point of of reference in this troublesome time. And I'm grateful for family and friends, and especially for our granddaughter, Hannah. Who is having a third birthday soon. Yes, and is very excited. <laughs> we are grateful for God's love. I'm thankful for extended family and long-awaited vacations. Our New Testament scripture today comes from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 14, and verse 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him those who have died. Therefore, encourage one another with those words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us come before God in prayer and thanksgiving. Thank you for all the things you have given to us. Thank you for the earth and all creation. For life and health. Thank you for home and harvest. Thank you for work, work and school, play and rest. Thank you for family and friends. Thank you for teachers. For children and parents. Thank you for people that made our lives better just by being there. Thank you for people whose needs call us to do something. God, thank you for our church. Thank you for its leaders and teachers. Thank you for all who are a part of it. Thank you for friendship and faith. Thank you for this. May we live now as and always as thankful people. Amen.
scripture narrative is about Jonah. Jonah was a prophet, and a prophet is somebody that God comes so close to that they can hear God's message. One day, God said to the prophet Jonah, Go at once to Nineveh and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But instead of doing what God said, Jonah went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid his fare and went on board to get away from God. But while he was on board, the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. And such a mighty storm came up upon the sea that it threatened to break the entire ship up. The mariners, the sailors, were so afraid, and they cried out to their own gods. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and was fast asleep. The captain came to him and said, What are you doing? Get up and call on your god. The sailors decided then to cast lots and find out who was at fault. When they did, the lots fell to Jonah. They asked him, Why is there such a storm? What have you done? They already knew that he was running away, so they asked him what to do to make the storm stop. And Jonah told them to pick him up and throw him into the sea. The men didn't want to. They tried to find another way. But the storm grew so bad, they prayed for God's forgiveness and threw Jonah into the sea. And just at that moment, the storm ceased raging. And alone in the sea, Jonah was swallowed up by a great fish. And Jonah was in the belly of that fish for three long days and three long nights, praying to the Lord his God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jonah is swallowed by a sea monster and carried underneath the water, down deep into the darkness. It is in the darkness, underneath the unknown, where our monsters live. We were all raised to fear monsters. Children, and let's be honest, even adults, are all afraid of monsters. Monsters in our closets, monsters under our beds, monsters even deep between our bed sheets. We fear monsters. We fear monsters underneath it all. Maybe even underneath our skin, in the dark places of our own hearts and minds. I believe that monsters are very real. But we should not fear them. Our monsters are merely manifestations of what we have been avoiding for far too long. Jonah, for instance, is running away from God's calling, running away, avoiding the places he did not wish to go. But isn't this what we all do? We run away, we avoid hard places at all costs. We push ourselves in a direction that we think is best when God is actually calling us to take another path, another road less traveled. But it is there, on this road least traveled, that we find these sea creatures. The creatures we fear the most start rising up out of the waters and then swallow us whole. But sea creatures, these monsters, can take us down to places that seem so dark at first, that seem terrifying. But these are the places where we might actually experience healing and wholeness. But first we have to jump in, we have to be willing to go if we ever want to experience this healing, this holy healing, in a way that actually makes us 
whole human beings. I mean, this is really the timeless journey that has been imagined and reimagined by great writers, writers like Moby Dick or The Odyssey or even Dante's Inferno. Dante writes in the beginning of his first book, he says, midway on our life's journey, I found myself in dark woods, the right road lost. To tell about those woods is hard so entangled and rough and savage that thinking of it now, I feel the old fear stirring. Death is hardly more bitter, and yet to treat the good I found there as well. I'll tell you what I saw. Hmm. This journey down into the darkness the entanglement of monsters we all must face like Jonah does. Jonah who is even willing to pray in the belly of that great sea creature. Jonah cries out to God. I called to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me out of the belly of Sheol. I cried and you heard my vi voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters enclosed over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me up from life from the pit, O oh Lord, my God, as my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty, but I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Hmm. It is here in Jonah chapter 2 that the monster, the monster actually allows Jonah to discover new life, deliverance from his old self. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? That God uses our monsters to deliver us into new life. Hmm. But monsters, monsters are gruesome, ooh, gory creatures, terrifying, especially the ones that live in the homes of our heart, that haunt us in the night, that dwell underneath our slumber, keeping us wide awake. I find that the monster of grief is often the most terrifying monster of all. Hmm. In a recent movie I watched with Josh, I learned a lot about the terrifying monster of grief. In the 2014 Australian horror film called Babadook, Amelia is the main character, a single mother, a troubled and exhausted widow living in Australia who is bringing up her six-year-old son, Sam. Her late husband, Oscar, was killed in a car accident that occurred as he drove Amelia to the hospital six years before while she was in labor with Sam. In the film, Sam begins displaying erratic behavior. He even becomes uh, an insomniac and is preoccupied with this imaginary monster. Against he, against, uh, he decides to build even weapons to fight against the monster. One night, Sam asks his mother to read a new book he found, a pop-up book called Mr. Babadook. But this book described this so-called monster Babadook, a tall, pale-faced humanoid in a top hat with 
taloned fingers, which torments its victims as they become more aware of his existence. Amelia, like any mother, is disturbed by this book and its mysterious appearance. But Sam believes that this monster, that the Babadook, is real. Sam, Sam's persistence about the Babadook leads Amelia to have these sleepless nights where she tries to comfort him, but then herself becomes so exhausted. Even throughout the film, Amelia's friends and family try to help her. They notice that her grief is still lingering within her, grief of her deceased husband from years ago. They even try to confront her at times, but she is not willing to see or even acknowledge this grief within. Midway through the movie, strange events start occurring in the house. Doors open and close mysteriously by themselves. Strange sounds are heard. And Amelia even finds glass shards in her food. But soon Amelia starts to become more isolated and shut in, being more impatient, even shouting at Sam for disobeying her constantly. And then she starts having frequent visits from this mysterious monster, Babadook. Her mental state slowly decays, and then she starts, ex uh, starts exhibiting erotic and even violent behavior. One night, Amelia sees an apparition of her deceased husband, Oscar, who offers to return her if she brings the boy to him. But Amelia realized that Oscar will never come back as she once knew him. She realizes that the creation of Babadook now has become this monster of grief living within her, living within her house, and it's finally possessed her. She becomes violent and uncontrollable. And her Sam, her beloved son, Sam, starts fighting off the monster within her. And eventually, Amelia gets the Babadook to come out from beneath her own skin and they end up trapping the monster in the basement. This is when Sam and Amelia learn to live with their monster, to live together, even though the Babadook is still in the basement. The monster Babadook is a metaphor for grief, the grief that both Amelia and Sam were not willing to work through together. The monster even tries to devour them, swallowing them whole, hurling them down into these dark waters of violent behavior. But it was there, in those dark places, standing before their monsters, that they experienced, too, what Jonah was praying about in the belly of that sea creature. Grief. Hmm. Grief can quickly become an uncontrollable monster, a monster in our lives that can devour not only us, but those around us. The monster of grief shows up in many ways. Maybe the loss of a loved one, the loss of livelihood, the loss of future plans. Grief can be so ferocious in so many forms. What I really liked about the film is that Amelia, at the end, was able to go down to the basement once a day. She was still scared of the monster, but she wanted to face the Babadook every day, to face her fear. At one point, the Babadook tries to take hold of her again, but instead of fighting back, Amelia is gentle with herself and gentle with her monster. Hmm. Each day she would go down to the basement and visit the Baba Duke, but then she would return upstairs. She would step outside and she would play joyfully with Sam out in the backyard. 
Yes, grief is terrifying. And you may be grieving this year for so many reasons. You may have had to say goodbye to a spouse or a father or a mother or a sister or a brother or some dear friend. You may have been let go from your job or forced into early retirement or had to cut back hours. You may even be grieving the results of this election year. You may be grieving financial strains. You may even be grieving the grim possibilities of the future to come. But today, I invite you to befriend your monster of grief. Yes, it's a terrifying, ferocious monster that we must face. But take courage. Take courage and trust. Trust that when we descend into the deep, dark places we fear the most, that God, God will deliver us in a way that we might not ever imagine, taking us to a place where we can experience new life. Yes, we like Jonah, we need to sit in the belly of the beasts for a little while sit in the muck and mess and horror of the heavy grief we might be living with today. But it is here, it is here where we can find the mystery of God underneath the monsters of our lives. Parker Palmer, a writer and famous Quaker, writes this, mystery surrounds every deep experience of the human heart. The deeper we go into the heart's darkness or its light, the closer we get to the ultimate mystery of God. Today, take courage, befriend your monster, and let that creature take you beyond your fear, beyond your guilt, a place where the mystery of God moves us from grief to gratitude. Gratitude that reminds us all that we are not alone, that we are all loved children of God. Amen. Join us for Bible studies on Sundays and Thursdays. Subscribe to our emails in our newsletter mail out. Get involved in our amazing music ministries. Engage your family in our wonderful youth and children's programs. We want you to be invested. We want you to be connected. Here at Butchel Park Baptist Church, we are an inclusive community of faith rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. Grow serving and transforming lives.